to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Praise the name of the Lord. Good morning, everybody. I'd like us to appreciate all the veterans of the gospel here, our bishop and every other person. May the Lord bless you in Jesus' name. Bear the weight of your glory cover us. Let the light of your river Let the truth of your kingdom let reign on me. Let the weight of your glory fall. Let the weight of your glory yesterday night usually whenever I go to minister in a city the Holy Spirit would reveal to me the needs of that city and I went to bed and I had a dream I just thought to start by sharing that dream and in that dream I was lifted to the sky and I saw graves many graves and all of a sudden it was like the sound of thunder and I just saw the graves open people began to come out that was what and I believe with all my heart that that is a prophetic picture of what God is doing in this season even though it was three days that Lazarus was dead, he said, roll away the stone. And he spoke, he said, Lazarus, come forth. So I, just to buttress on what um, Reverend Cannon was saying, decline in godliness, morals, business, and so on and so forth. Let me tell you this. It is true that God is able to make a life again. And let me speak to you prophetically on each other. Remember not the former things, nor consider the things of old, because in this season, God is doing a new thing. It will never be said Ichabod over this city again. In the name of Jesus Christ. And for some of the people who are here, you may not even know that you represent the next apostolic and prophetic voices you see it's good to bring in people from every territory to come and strengthen the region but god must raise people from within the region nobody will be more passionate about your region than those who come from the soil is that true we're here for a day or two no matter how anointed we are and we return back but God must raise people. And can I tell you, my dear people, do not despise what God is doing in your life. Some of you are still in the school of the Spirit. No one knows you yet. You are not the Joshua Selmans. But you do not despise what God is doing. It is impossible for God to not have a witness within a city. It's just that the making of men of power is a very hard task. And not many people are willing to stay through until God is done with them. But I'm bringing you a word of hope 
one day a shofar will blow over your city and you will see men rise that you did not know elijah made a mistake and he said i'm the only one and god said no there are seven thousand others there are men and women there are intercessors and prophets there are apostles they are still in the school of the spirit they have not gone for any ministration some of them do not even know they are the ones god refused to reveal to them so it does not distract their training but i can tell you i know by the spirit that scattered here and following online the overflows there are many people that god is raising there are many people that God is building. There are Deborah's women of power. There are Esther's who will sit at the palace and preserve the doings of God. There are Elijah's. There are Enoch's. Just help those under the anointing. When you are in an atmosphere like this, you have to be very sensitive because it is not only the teaching of the word ezekiel chapter 2 and verse 1 help them please he said son of man stand up on your feet and i will speak to you but he did not have the strength verse 2 says and the spirit entered me this is the difference between the preaching of the gospel and a lecture there is an infusion of the spirit it's important to discern the kind of grace that you are under is is bringing activations and many of you in the midst of this conference angelic activities supernatural encounters activations of dormant spiritual gifts you are in an atmosphere that can make this happen hallelujah so for the few minutes that we have to spend please do not allow anybody distract you like i said yesterday for every one person who comes here there are destinies that are connected to your obedience destinies connected to your yieldedness it is selfish to not pay attention because the consequence will go beyond you hallelujah So, while the word of God is coming, take away every sense of pride. I know this, I know that. Just keep it. Wisdom is justified by her results. If you don't have results, just humble yourself and settle down and learn. God organizes meetings like this to help us. It's an election of grace. We come to lift up the hands of one another so that the territory can experience the grace of God in a higher dimension please pray one prayer father give me an encounter this morning let it be a desperate prayer from the depth of your heart pray give me an encounter hallelujah Please be seated this morning I want to teach on the church and I want you to please pay attention to the things that I have to say there will be many impartations while I am teaching please whether you are an usher or not just help those under the anointing and so that we minimize distraction holy 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 Holy, 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 holy is the Lord God Almighty, is the Lord God Almighty, my life is full of your This house is full of your glory. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. 
there is the spirit of the intercessor i'm seeing the number 24 is coming on 24 people the spirit of an intercessor is an activation there are many women i'm seeing the wailing women god is shifting them into that ministry of intercession i stretch my hands all over the auditorium everyone who must drink of this grace in the name of jesus christ may that grace come upon your life the spirit of the intercessor the spirit of the intercessor grace to travail like hannah the prophetess the grace of an intercessor men do not just pray there is an engracing of the spirit that helps men When the fire of the Holy Spirit comes, among the many things that it does is it takes away lukewarmness. You see, let me say something respectfully, especially to co-laborers in the gospel. The truth is that you can fake power, but you cannot fake a genuine relationship with God. Every time you stand before men, you give them a piece of your secret place. You reveal the authenticity of your relationship with the Holy Spirit. This is not about gimmicks. This is not even about being a man of God. If every church in this city, regardless the denomination, carries a measure of fire and presence, that people come for a Sunday service, and within that one hour or two hours, they cannot even explain what has happened to them fire upon their prayer lives fire upon their word life conviction of the holy spirit breaking sinners down transforming believers it's impossible for the city to remain that way help the person who will begin to run out now just bring the person for me here by the power of the holy spirit Help them, help them please, so they don't injure themselves. Spirit of the Sovereign Lord, will you come and make your presence known within the glory of the reason, Lord? Spirit of the Sovereign Lord, come and make your presence known with me, the glory of the risen Lord. Let the weight of your glory cover us. Let the light of your river flow. Let the truth of your kingdom, let it rain, let it rain in us. Let the weight of your glory fall. Let the weight of your glory fall. Emmanuel, 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 your name is called Emmanuel, your name is called.
Your name is called Emmanuel. Your name is called. Spirit of the living God, that you will rest upon every one of us. Give us an experience that glorifies Jesus. Give us an experience that lifts up the saints within this territory. Let there be a restoration of dead prayer lives, prayer altars that have gone cold. In the name of Jesus, passion for God that has been lost. Let there be a reignition by the Spirit of grace. Hunger for spiritual things that has gone down, replaced by a passion for other things. I set up a fire once again. Set up a fire once again. Just be patient with what God is doing. You call it a quarry site. I set up a fire once again. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hello, Madonna. Hello, Madonna. I'm speaking to this territory by the spirit there will be a reemergence of three graces one there will be a restoration of the prophetic upon your land I'm speaking to you by the spirit of the living God I don't know why is the prophetic but God is going to begin to raise from any and every denomination strange manifestation prophetic teachers men and women who will have the seeing eyes and even the hearing ears some of them will be young some of them will be old some of them will be uneducated some of them will be educated but all i like is a move of the spirit do not fight it when it comes he will meet people in their homes he will meet students in their campuses fire while they study fellowships will re-emerge with fire and power this will happen by the Spirit of God. Number two, there will be an emergence of Joseph's men and women who will be given grace to preserve the economic heritage of this territory. These are beyond businessmen. These are not just men who do trade. They are men who are given the secrets of the kingdom to preserve the economic heritage. hear me please listen to me listen to me 
and take note of what I'm saying. The third thing that God is going to do I'm seeing a lot of people who come from this soil and are outside this country. I see many of them returning back to develop the soil. Many, many people. Some of them are blessed people. They will come with projects that you will think is the government doing it, but it's individuals empowered by the Spirit of God. This thing you see will lead to advancement all wise individuals will construct roads you will think is the government but it's a single individual doing it empowered by the holy spirit but for now we're at the quarry side we need to discuss the church please sit down if you can There is a lot of misconception about what the church is and this may be the reason why many people have been unable to experience the power and the grace of God. There is a family that has been oppressed. You are from Imo state. You are not from this state. I'm seeing a family from Emo State. This has been an age-long oppression. I hope I'll be able to teach this morning. We had left the miracle service for the evening so that we can have some time to teach the word, but the Lord is just prompting me. This is a family from Emo State. I'm seeing everything grounded. It looks like nothing. Nobody is rising. Nobody is excelling. Wherever that family is, by the Spirit of the Lord, I stretch forth my hands in the name of Jesus help them I come by the rod of a higher priesthood and I declare in the name of Jesus Christ let the reign of darkness let it come to an end now let it come to an end now help them help that woman please let it come to an end now I bring you the authority of the kingdom and I declare in the name of Jesus, John 1, 5, and the light, help them please, the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Let the light of God's power dispel every activity connected to witchcraft, connected to ancestry. The Bible says, blotting out every handwriting and every ordinance that spoke against us, that he nailed it to his cross. Therefore, help that gentleman, in the name of Jesus, be free now. Be free now. Who is like him? Lion at the land, seated on the throne. Mountains bow down. And every ocean roll to the Lord of Lords. We will praise Adonai from the rising of the sun to the end of every day. Praise Adonai, all the nations of the earth. Can we have some time for the word? Let's see how God helps us. You see, let me tell you this. Sometimes these revelations come because of the hunger and the burden of God's people. And every opportunity God has to reach his people, he just presses in to make sure that within the time allocated for the conference that God's people have genuine encounters. That you will, Moses did not have to tell anybody he met God. There was an evidence. 
so that anyone who could not meet the burning bush needed to only meet Moses and he will have the same experience not everybody will have the opportunity to see the burning bush but the one who saw the burning bush should be able to give the other people the burning bush experience there are other people who did not make it for this conference they shouldn't feel bad when they see you because you should not only carry your own testimony you should also carry an anointing to say even though you went on a business errand and you could not come find rest this is not about men this is about God moving among his people experience your own portion of the deliverance of the healing I started to seek the Lord very early in life I became tired of religion I became tired of all kinds of stories I saw many preachers read from this Bible I studied it myself and I knew that something was wrong because the more I read the Bible the more I knew that many people talking about it or talking from it did not know God and it, it was not a it was not an expression of sarcasm I knew there had to be something more please pay attention now I would watch the sick come I would watch oppressed people come and because of the prophetic inclination I could be sitting in the church like this and watch spirits oppress people while the sermon is going on then we share the grace and the people go back with those oppression and yet we said Jesus heals Jesus delivers he is the same yesterday today and forever I said no something has to be I mean you cannot tell people to stop idol worship if the alternative you are giving them the idol that has protected someone for 100 years without fail now you are telling the person leave it and what you are giving the person is so carries a semblance of 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 lack of result eventually the person will drop this and go back to what works because nobody leaves what works the reason why the propositions we give people are not well received is because it is not backed with sufficient evidence Are we together? And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you. And we will never settle for less. We know there's more that's found in you. So my hunger made me to begin to search scripture. I met a lot of preachers, well-meaning, well-intentioned people, and I asked them questions. We read scriptures like, I was young and now I am old. I have never seen the righteous forsaken, nor his seed beg for bread. Me, I've seen him. I saw many, many righteous people begging for bread. And so I said, something must be wrong. It was not a call to criticism and sarcasm don't get me wrong it was just a hunger in my heart and you see today's world has many alternatives there are about 4,000 religions registered in the world today and anybody can literally just take a step out of the faith life and begin any other pursuit they think will help their lives find meaning so yesterday night we began to discuss the gospel that works that there is a gospel that does not work and there is a gospel that works for i am not ashamed of the gospel yes for it is the power of god unto salvation to everyone that believes let's go to the book of matthew chapter 16. i'll finish up my story another time Matthew chapter 16 Jesus now is building the disciples through mentorship from verse 13 
these disciples would later become the apostles of the Lamb. The Bible says when he came from the region of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples saying, now this would be the first mention of the word church from scripture. But the entire discourse started with a question. Question of identity. Who do men say that I, the son of man, am? You know what led to this question? Because when Jesus walked upon the earth, according to some of the synoptic accounts, he began to do great and mighty things. And people saw, they would see him act like Elijah. They would see him act like Jeremiah. They would see him act like some of the prophets. And the idea of reincarnation was something that they believed very, very strong. When you read Bible history, it was not a concept that was, um, they believed it, that people could come in the form or the semblance or the expression of others. For instance, remember in the book of Acts chapter 12, when, don't turn there, remember when Peter came and knocked the door. They said they thought it was his angel and they closed the door back. So these things were not strange occurrences with the believers then. And here we have an expression. The disciples had been discussing themselves. Who is this man? One moment he's eating with us. Another moment he's acting as though he's not a man. And Jesus wanted to bring context to that discussion. And he said, all right, I see that you people have been asking all kinds of questions. As you discuss with men, who do they say that I, the son of man, am? Next verse. So they said, some say you are John the Baptist. Some say you are Elijah. Others say you are Jeremiah. And others say you are one of the prophets. Isn't it amazing that you can be close to the truth and yet not know? They were around him benefiting from him just because you are around spiritual things does not mean you know god you can be around church you can be around fasting around prayer around bible study here are the disciples utterly confused even though they had worked with jesus for a while 15. so he said unto them i have had the opinion of others at least they see me from afar you people who are close to me now, we eat together, we pray together. What is your verdict about me? And to his shock and amazement, none of them had an answer. Next verse. Except Peter speaking by the Spirit. Here's what he said. Simon Peter answered and said, You are the Christ. King James says, I know who thou art. Christ, the Son of of the living God he never called him Jesus I know who thou art you are Christ the son of the living God next verse Jesus answered and said blessed are you Simon son of Jonah for flesh and blood that means revelation is not within the realm of flesh and blood you have to rise above the realm of flesh and blood access to revelation flesh and blood has not revealed this to you but my father which is in heaven now jesus begins to speak 18 and also i say unto you you are peter and on this rock what rock this has become a theological debate for many, many, many centuries. There have been several schools of thought as to what that rock is. Remember, we just agreed that revelation is not within the realm of flesh and blood. Thou art Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church. Take note of what he's saying now. We're going to walk this scripture now. I will build my church and i will fashion it in a way and manner that the gates of hell shall not prevail against it the architect is speaking he's saying i'm about to build something it will be so formidable you will know i built it 
because it will have such strength against the gates of hell so please go back to verse 18 again we're discussing the church jesus said about three or four things in this scripture number one i am the builder number two the name of what i'm building is called the church number three the dexterity of the architecture will be revealed by its ability to withstand the onslaughts of the gates of hell are we together now and then number four i will build that church on a rock what is the rock now there are theologians here and there are veterans in church history i do not intend by any means to insult your pedigree or whatever it is that you know you have known to be but based on revelation and from the scripture you see this rock was not peter as many people purport no this rock is a strategy i will build my church on this rock a spiritual strategy what is the strategy the strategy is that flesh and blood listen carefully flesh and blood has not revealed this to you but the spirit of my father so it is going to be a church that will be built on a strategy that is absolutely dependent on the spirit of god a strategy that is higher than flesh and blood it would not just come from is beyond science this church i'm building has the foundation from the realm of the spirit it's not just a physical structure are we together because the church is largely not known and understood many of the activities that should be captured within the church is either not captured or not effectively captured and i just want to show us three dimensions of the church this morning and then we'll pray we need to know what the church is and what the church is not are we ready now number one the church of the lord jesus christ is a spiritual strategy write it down the church beyond a people and beyond buildings the first revelation of the church is that it is a strategy the church is not just a people we are coming there the church is not just an institution the church is first and foremost in order of priority a spiritual strategy in fact the only spiritual strategy that sustains the ability to advance the purposes of the kingdom on earth is called the church there is no other strategy that sustains the formidability to make kingdom come happen outside of the church the church is a spiritual strategy are we together jeremiah chapter 51 let's read from verse 20 to 23 the church is a spiritual strategy the strategy that god will use like you meet a military man please look up those of you who are in military or have been exposed to military usually when military is about to carry out an operation they have a plethora of strategies and they examine the uniqueness of the operation and then they select what strategy is that true they name the strategy after animals they name the strategy after several events it is it is consistent with the military to select a strategy that helps them to deal with a situation this is how it is spiritually jeremiah 51 we're going to read to 23 thou art my battle axe it didn't say you are holding a battle axe you are it you are my battle axe and then you are a weapon a weapon like a military man holds a gun right he's supposed to do something with that gun and god is saying you are my battle axe and my weapon of war he says with you aha uh -huh. watch this now with you i will break in pieces the nations i will destroy kingdoms we're reading to 23 next verse with you i will break in pieces the horse and its rider 
with you i will break in pieces the chariot and his rider with you i will break in pieces man and woman i will break in pieces young and old i will break in pieces the young man and the maid interesting next verse I will also break in pieces the shepherd and his flock. I will break in pieces the husbandman and his yoke of oxen. I will break in pieces the captains and rulers. What sort of a weapon is this that can break everything? It can break men. It can break things. It can break kingdoms. It can break nations. It can break animate things. Inanimate things. Same weapon. Thou art my battle axe. He's showing you the extent of formidability. There are tools that cannot be used for certain operations. You can have a small hammer that you use to hit a little nail. You can't use it to hit something very large. But he's saying this strategy, there is nothing. It is an all-purpose strategy. That strategy has a ministry to the young. It has a ministry to the old. It has a ministry to the rich. It has a ministry to the poor. It has a ministry to civilized nation. It has a ministry to under civilized nation. For as long as you are God's creation, you are my battle axe. The church is a strategy. A strategy that is able to bring kingdom come across every strata of human activities. You have to understand this. The church was God's invention. It was an invention that came from his intelligence. The fountain of wisdom came up with an idea, an idea that promotes his agenda, and he named that idea the church. When you know that the church is a strategy that came out from God's wisdom, then you know that the church cannot fail. The leaders in the church can fail. The policies of the church can fail. The members in the church can fail. But the church, as that strategy, is backed up by the jealousy of God. It cannot fail. I think it's important we know this. Because we live in times where we think the church is just a religious idea. Just a, a moral aspect of society. It's more than that. The church is a spiritual strategy. And it cannot fail. Because it was built by God himself. Are we together? So the first revelation of the church that I want to bring this morning is that the church is strategy. As you are sitting down right now, you are a strategy. A strategy to do something about the moral decadence in your family. A strategy to do something about the prevalence of witchcraft. That means every time, come my friend, any one of you again that I use, gentleman, please come. Watch this. So every time there is decadence, a family where nobody is rising, a family where everybody is going down, a family that is deeply rooted in idol worship, poverty, all kinds of limitations. When God wants to help that family, he sends a strategy called the church. So you are his strategy. You are his solution. He's not concerned about that situation because he knows that your presence already is a solution to that problem. This is why the church is called light. The church is called salt. Light because it gives illumination and direction. The church means that you are the eyes that men use to see. Salt means that you are preservers. And then you add taste and value. Do you know something about the salt and light? It is never too late for light to enter a room. And it is never too late to add salt. There are certain ingredients when you are cooking. If you don't add it within a particular time, you've lost it. But salt, even when the food is on the table, you can still add it. Pay attention, please. So the church is a strategy. It is never too late for us to show up there's no such thing as you came too late no not with the church if you were there in 1913 idol worship will not come don't worry now i am here there is still something that can be done about it listen don't just look at yourself as a member of a parish 
that is wonderful but more than that you are god's idea you are a strategy every time you see people crying and say god won't you rise next time you see mama saying will i go to the grave without seeing your salvation in your mind know that your mother is praying for your rising you are god's strategy the strategy will not come from heaven is already here the church is god's battle axe When there was a cry in israel when they were in egypt they cried and they cried and they cried a strategy came called moses is that true moses was not just a child he was a strategy for deliverance when there was hunger and famine was going to come god raised a strategy called joseph and kept him there when Haman began to nurse through the spirit of the Antichrist, the plot to destroy Israel, God, the moment he kept Esther there, he found rest. I have two strategies. There is Esther in the palace. There is Mordecai at the gate. They are enough to take these people. God only becomes troubled when he looks around and does not find any strategy. If there are enemies coming and you drop a bomb, you can run away and watch them act nonsense there because you know that that bomb will explode and defeat them when god drops you somewhere and people are shouting and it looks like he's not answering it's because he has answered lord when will you arise in this family and you plan to have three children but two more came and you said this is not my it was not my plan to have two more children the prayer of lord how will you help this family came with two strategies you held them after nine months you call them children but they are not children they are god's strategy for deliverance lord preserve the anglican communion so that when we are long gone we will not lose this heritage and there are people who had no business being priests they were planning somewhere maybe to travel abroad and the holy spirit meandered them through one sermon there are the strategies that have been kept for the preservation of prophecy listen i want you to know that scattered around your life are strategies that ensure you do not fail these strategies are we together pastor the next time you stand to preach and you look at the members and you are discouraged lord do something about my finances do something about the decadence in society every one person you stand who is making contact with your eyes on Sunday is a strategy that is an answer to that prayer there is a strategy that will correct something that is happening politically there is a strategy that will correct something that is happening economically just because they do not look like it no act sharpens itself so they come to you blunt it is your responsibility to sharpen that axe when you sharpen the axe then you will see what it can do to a tree if you have eight days to cut a tree you seven days sharpening the knife and you will hit that tree once and it will go down but if the axe head is blunt you will keep hitting for years and for decades are you seeing why this is called a quarry site because among the many things, we are not just sharpening stones. We are sharpening battle axes. God's strategy. Because for some of you, it's time to live out that prophecy. Before you were born, your mother saw something about you. And now you are 30 years, you are 40 years, and mama is saying, ah, I don't know what is happening. And God is saying, don't worry. There is a conference this year. Let them come. Do not forget this teaching. The church is number one. A strategy that means you are not supposed to complain anything that is wrong there must be a responsibility component with it if there is corruption within society other people can be saying ah what will we do the church should not join in that lamentation we are the strategy the definition of darkness is the world without us it's not just absence of light no are we together everyone you call patriarchs archived in hebrews 11 elders the bible says 
these men were not just men they were strategies the church is a strategy so mysterious satan cannot understand it because this strategy is not the kind of strategy that operates in the flesh and satan does not understand how this strategy works after many years when jesus watch this when jesus became a man satan knew that he was here for a reason but how redemption would happen satan did not know so when jesus offered himself satan thought that he had prevailed and he led him as a sheep to the slaughter why is this man weak like this this is god in the flesh had they known this they would not have crucified the lord of glory it was a strategy weakness is a strategy that defeats strength every time you see weakness be afraid of it because weakness has the power to defeat strength jesus used weakness to defeat strength esther used weakness to defeat strength when god wants to make you strong he makes you weak it's a mystery you never become strong the grace of god does not look for strong men when it comes and finds strength it goes back and waits until that was why he touched the whole of jacob's tie he said jacob you cannot receive grace you are sufficient in yourself there has to be something that makes you imbalance so that my grace becomes your completer so let me help you i have to create weakness in your life Can I tell you this? Do not be angry that you came from the family you came from. You would not need the grace you want now if you did not come from that background. Strength always looks for weakness. Like light always looks for darkness. Light does not go where there is light. It's not needed there. So when God, knowing the kind of grace that will come upon you, he gave you the honor of coming through a family with such darkness. You've been complaining for a long time. Lord, why didn't they give birth to me in a white house in the presidency? And he said, listen, listen, listen. If I gave birth to you, then you already have your reward. But now that you came from a family of idol worship for 150 years, the grace on your life will show the all-surpassing excellency of God's power. Can anything good come out of Nazareth? And the best gift indeed came out of Nazareth. Dearly beloved, I hope you were blessed by this message. I want you to keep doing something for this man of God, our man of God, Apostle Joshua Salmon. And that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing, keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.